Hello, everyone, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin, and today we are going to do a playthrough of Dice Throne Adventures. Now, this game is a campaign game. I'm not planning on doing the whole campaign on the channel, but there are two different types of scenarios. There are portal crawls, which is what you start with when you start the campaign, and then there are boss battles, and there are four of them. So what my plan is, is we're going to do a portal crawl and a boss fight so you can see how both of those work, since they do work quite differently. Also, make sure to check out Mike's review that's also on the channel about Dice Throne Adventures. I'll put a link to that in the description below. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into setup, and then after that, we can start our playthrough. The first thing that you'll want to do is print out a campaign sheet. You can see here you'll put your team name. I decided to call us the One Stop Team. Uh, players, we're just going to do one character here since it's not much different. There's not a ton of cooperating in this game. You can do some cooperating, like I could play a red card on your turn to help you out. But in general, I think you'll see what you need to see with just a solo player, and that's a lot easier for me to control as well. <laughs> I'm going to control the ninja since I've only played this game about three times. Uh, I think Mike has owned the base game of this before, just Dice Throne, not Dice Throne Adventures. So he did a playthrough with two of them back in the day. So if you want to see one with more than one uh, specific hero, check that out. Uh, difficulty level, why that matters is it tells us how much we score per scenario. So we're going to score 20 points per scenario that we win. Uh, and then you can see I've put that here for the 20. You'll also see here we're starting on scenario 1 and our starting cells, which our cells will be used... It all depends upon the type of scenario that we choose, what the selves can do, but in general, they will heal us, which is a good thing because a lot of these heroes don't have healing. Like like the ninja, I don't have healing potions or anything like that. Win or lose, after this scenario, I will complete this and we'll see how that works. So our scenario sheet is ready to go. The next step of setup is choosing a random scenario one card. Now there's a total of four of them. I already randomly chose before starting the video so that that way you didn't have to sit here while I set that up. We're going to do this first one, but just know if I replay the campaign, I have three more scenario ones that I could potentially pick. I also do want to mention when you move to the boss fights, there's only one boss fight scenario card for each one of the bosses. So every time you play this, that will be the same. So our portal crawl here shows us how to set up our map, which we've already done. We have different uh, tokens that are going to be placed on the board. These ones, these tokens, we need to find and collect all three of them before we can go and defeat the level four minion that's in the portal crawl. And that means we've won this scenario. So I need to for sure go to this tile over here, this tile over here, and this one over here here. These symbols over here are loot chests. When we get to them, we get a free roll on the loot uh, the loot table, and we may, might get new cards, some more money, some health. Usually I'm hoping for health. <laughs> and then we have three healing salves that we'll also place out on the board. And you can see here, this tells us what the healing salves will do in this scenario. They will heal a total of three plus one per portal shard collected. So for an example, if I had collected this one, and I decided to use a salve, that'll actually heal me for four. We also could potentially revive a downed teammate, but since I'm only playing solo, we don't even have to worry about reviving downed teammates. We do have our hero set up over here since I'm playing with one player. My health of my ninja is 35. If we are playing with four characters, our health would only be 10. We're also going to start with two of those beautiful salve tokens. So I have both of those as well over here. Our starting gold will be at 15. So I have that on here and we'll be tracking that throughout the scenario. The conclusion and King's Hand token, we don't have to worry about the conclusion. We don't have to worry about till we end the scenario. And the King's Hand token, I think we'll only really see that when we go to the level four uh, minion. So we'll see that when that happens. Now, Dice Throne Adventures came with either standees or miniatures, and I did get the painted miniatures. Well, I'm pretty happy with them. They're uh, definitely not burnt level, but they are quite good for being factory painted. So this is our ninja. You can see here we always start at the Crimson Sands. This is where we're ultimately trying to get to and defeat that level four minion. All of these tiles, there's multitudes of each type. So there's, I mean, at least 15 level ones and level twos. I've randomly chosen them. I don't know what's on them. When we reveal them, we will activate what's on there and most likely fight a minion. I've also grabbed all the minion cards, they look like these, and shuffled up their respective decks and we're ready to go. When we find that first minion, we'll flip over the corresponding colors. So you can see this is the level 1, there's a level 2, I have a level 3 here, and then I've chosen one random level 4. 
Here we have our loot table. We will be rolling on this for whenever we find loot. So it might be we've found this token here, that would be a loot, or if one of the enemies that we defeat will gain us loot. We'll roll our d20 die, depending upon what roll we get, we get a certain type of benefit. And you'll see how that works as we play. Here we have our ninja board. You can see here we have tons of different abilities that starts on our card. We have our awesome ultimate ability. You can see all of the abilities have different symbols on them and what they do and how they activate. These are our five dice. When we roll them up, we can use them to activate. So let's see, I've got two here. I've got one sword. And let's say I had rolled this face symbol. Then I could choose to activate my smoke screen. So what we're going to do during the game, when it's our turn, we're going to roll our five dice up to three times any amount of them and then try and activate one of our abilities we start off the game with two combat points and we saw already 35 health we will be throughout the game leveling up these abilities and i do want to mention we also have a defense ability which you will definitely see how that works when we get attacked each character also has their own 32 card deck however i do have the promo so i threw the promo in there so i think there's 33 cards here so what we need to do is give this a good shuffle i already shuffled it beforehand i'll do a little more and then we will draw four cards from this and that will be our starting hand let's go ahead and look at these four cards our first one here is get that out of here. Now this costs one CP. CP are the combat points that we have here. We're starting with two. We'll gain one during each of the upkeep phases when we actually have a battle. Uh, so it costs us one. We can use it during the main phase of our turn. It says remove a status token from a chosen player. That could be a good one on a minion or a bad one on us. We have, ooh, this is a level two poison blade. So we can upgrade our basic poison blade with this. Uh, and what we're trying to roll to activate this is a small straight. A small straight is four dice that are in sequential order. So two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, or whatever, uh, three, four, five, six. Uh, and then we get to activate this ability. It costs one CP to pop it onto our board. Our next one we have is the Fan of Knives. Okay, this is deal damage that's undefendable. So normally damage is defendable, but there's undefendable damage, pure damage. We'll talk about all of that when that happens. <laughs> this is undefendable damage to three chosen opponents, and you can cho choose the same po opponent multiple times. So basically I could spend two CP to deal three undefendable da damage with my Fan of Knives. We have another upgrade. This is our smoke screen upgrade. And you can see here, this actually gives us two abilities. We've got the, uh, the Koji Curry, or we have the smoke screen too. Each one, this one deals for pure damage to two chosen opponents. Could be one, uh, the same opponent twice. This one, we can gain a smoke bomb and three uh, ninjutsus. And I'll show you how all of that works. It costs us two CP to put that out on our board. And then we'd have to roll these symbols during our roll phase to actually activate it. Each hero comes with a complexity rating. You can see here the ninja is only a two. <laughs> I chose that because only the third time and I'm recording it. Let's make it a little bit easier. Uh, it says here, the ninja knows that victory is never truly certain, so she has spent countless hours to hone her craft. As a master of ninjutsu, she deals massive amounts of damage using unconventional methods. When she's prepared, she can even dodge incoming attacks with more consistency than any other hero. There's also this really nice FAQ. Uh, I have read them. Hopefully, I won't keep them in my mind as we're playing. Each hero has different status effects that they can use either to affect other players or to affect themselves. Uh, they all have stacking limits. That means that's the um, most amount of those tokens that we can put on one character or player. So we have the delayed poison. We have a, a stacking limit of two. So we can have up to two on one character. It, they receive three damage at the end of their turn. You see how it's red? That means it's undefendable. So they can't defend against this damage. A player afflicted with this token removes it at the conclusion of their turn and then they receive three damage. So a nice way to slowly kill someone. <laughs> The next token type is one of the most powerful, and that's the smoke bomb. This is how our ninja is going to stay alive. <laughs> we have here spend and roll one to three to avoid damage. So when a player with this token, which by the way, the stacking limit is one, so I can't have multiples of these. I can only have one. They may choose to spend it. If spent, roll one die. If the outcome is one to three, no damage is received. And what's important about that is that's avoiding damage. I can avoid undefendable damage. Let me show you this chart quick. I find this chart super helpful because there's all these different types of damage. So you can see here, normal damage is the only one that's defendable. What that means is you actually can roll your defense against it. All these other damage types are not, but 
all damage types are avoidable, which is what we're doing with that smoke bomb, except for an ultimate. Uh, the only ultimate that we have to worry about is, I think, like level four and bosses have ultimates. Normal minions don't have ultimates, so we don't have to worry about that. But if you're playing competitively, that's good to know. You can't use a smoke bomb against someone else's ultimate attack. The final and probably the most fun is the ninjutsu tokens. Those are stacking limit of three. You can spend and roll to modify your attacks. You can always modify an attack before or after you do the attack action. And what's cool about attack modifiers... It states here, damage added by attack modifiers are considered to be the same type as the original damage being dealt. So if I'm dealing undefendable damage and I decide to use a ninjutsu, I'm going to deal more undefendable damage. Pretty cool. What you can do here is spend and roll to modify your attack. After attacking, a player with this token may spend it and roll one die. On a roll of one to three, we add one additional damage. On a four to five, you add two damage. On a six, you can either add two damage inflict delayed poison or make your attack undefendable and that would make the entire attack and this is just notating that it's an attack modifier finally they also show you the three sides of your dice so you can see one through three we've got our swords four through five we've got our shuriken and then number six we have our mask and of course our ultimate would be if we can roll all sixes which probably won't happen but i'm still gonna hope for it here we have our portal crawl turn order card. We first start with the move and explore. You can only do this if you're not engaged. You also can't just sit somewhere and do nothing for a turn. You have to always do something, either attack the engaged minion or move and explore. First thing you can do is try and spend a salve and then you can heal. You saw how we heal. We heal three plus the amount of those portal shards we have. Then we can move. You can move any distance across explored environments, orthogonal, not diagonal, to an unexplored environment or an ongoing minion battle. You can always go and help if you're playing cooperatively and there's someone that is in a battle, you can go and help them and attack that minion. Then you have to explore. If you move to an unexplored environment during the move step, reveal it and resolve all its effects, including tokens that are on top of it. You're going to reveal those and use those first before you actually do what's on the tile. If you reveal any of these types of minions, you'll draw the top card from the minion deck and then proceed to having battle. So you can see here a minion battle only if you're engaged. Uh, spend salve, and once again, you can do that. Then if the minion has first strike, they'll actually attack you first. Otherwise, you get to attack first, followed by a minion step. They get to attack. After that, then your turn ends. Now, since we're playing solo, we'll just keep going right back into the next round of starting here, spend the salve, and then first strike, hero step, minion step. But if you're playing cooperatively, the next player's turn would go. So I might be in the middle of a battle, have one round, and then someone else can come in and help take out that, uh, that minion, or they might go and explore somewhere else and have their own battle somewhere else. So it's pretty cool. You're not going to be sitting around for extended periods of time if you're playing with, let's say, three or four people. At the beginning of our game, it's pretty simple. We know what we're going to do. We're going to move on to this tile. It has been unexplored, so let's go ahead and explore it. Okay, we have Twisted Vines. First thing, over on this side, we gain one gold in the Twisted Vines. So we'll go ahead and grab our gold marker and put it up to 16. Then you can see here we are going to gain the Entangled Token. That is not a positive effect that's a negative effect we'll read what that does in a second and then over here it says we're going to spawn a green minion and engage it so let's go ahead and move on to this tile and let's see what entangled does and what minion we found a player afflicted with this token gets one fewer roll attempts during their next offensive roll phase at the conclusion of the roll phase remove this token so we'll just only be able to roll our dice twice instead of three times this first round let's go ahead and flip that top minion and we have the Lost Swordsman. Ah, the ninja has found the Lost Swordsman. Okay, a couple things to see on this card. First, what you need to know is the health is up here. So this Lost Swordsman has 11 health. That's not bad. Zero CP. Most of the minion CP doesn't matter anyways. But there are effects that can affect CP of opponents. So that's why they give them one. Uh, he has zero. He's not going to gain any. So we don't have to worry about that. Our rewards here are that if we do defeat him, we get to roll one time on the green loot table. Over here is the type of damage that he will do depending upon what he rolls. This shows what he's trying to roll. So he's trying to roll all five of their dice as these um, strike symbols. If he does that, he deals seven damage. And he does have a defense roll of three dice. And then he does uh, damage, non-defendable damage, depending upon what symbols he rolls. Or he might prevent some damage if he rolls this star symbol. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a tracker here, a health tracker, put it at 11 health. So he has a total of 11. I'm trying to get him down to zero. Since he does not have the first strike symbol, that means I actually get to go first. This is where we now move into the regular turn order step of Dice Throne Adventures. First thing we do is our upkeep phase. We'll resolve any applicable status effects. We don't have any right now other than entangled, which will affect us during our roll, offensive roll phase. Next, we're going to move to the income phase. Gain one CP and draw one card. So our CP goes from two to three. Now, if you've played Dice Throne Adventures, you know that the first player normally doesn't get an income phase. That is different in, in, than in Adventures. Adventures, you do get that first income phase as long as you're in a battle. So let's go ahead and draw our next card. We have a Tippet. Awesome. This costs us one CP. It's an exclamation point. So we can play this at any time. We can use this actually to affect our opponent's role as well. Increase or decrease any die by the value of one. A value of one cannot be decreased to a value of six, or a value of six can't be increased into a one. So you can't go from one side to the other of the die. I'm going to put that into my hand. I do want to mention my hand size is six. So I can't have more than six cards at the end of my turn. If I do, I have to sell some of them for CP and discard them. Now what we can do is move into the main phase. We can play ability upgrades, we can play main phase action cards, and of course we can sell any of the cards in our hand for one CP per card, discarding the card, gaining the CP. Then we'll move into that offensive roll phase where we now only get two rolls because we're entangled. Then our targeting roll phase, if there's more than two players, but there isn't, so we can skip that. And then the defensive roll phase, if we deal uh, defendable damage to this Lost Swordsman. Then we'll go back to another main phase where we could play main phase cards, and, and then we go to our discard phase. We have to discard down to six, selling any of those excess cards. With the cards that I have, I think I am going to use two out of the three CP to put out the smoke screen. So that's going to mean I'm going to go from three CP down to one, but I will now place this on my board. You can see here normally smoke screen. I have to roll one uh, sword, two shurikens, and a mask, and I get a chosen player gains the smoke bomb and two ninjutsus. A chosen opponent is inflicted with the delayed poison. But now what I have is essentially the same thing on top here. A chosen player gains a smoke bomb and three ninjutsus and do the poison, but I also have this bottom ability. Deal four pure damage to two chosen opponents, or I could just deal it to the same opponent twice. That'd be eight damage which is kind of cool so now what we're going to do is grab our five dice and give them a roll for our first offensive phase oh my goodness we have four look at that four shurikens one two three four that means we can already activate walk the line let's look at this quick Walk the line states that we can roll two dice and deal damage equal to the total roll value. If the final value is six or less, the attack becomes undefendable. Well, that's pretty good. I can choose to re-roll any dice, but I feel like I, I, I don't have anything that has five shurikens right now. So I think I might just leave it the way it is and let's activate the walking line or walk the line. Because of that, I'll grab only two of these dice and give them a roll. And let's see, we just dealt four plus four is eight damage. But since it's greater than six, that's defendable damage. And I do want to mention now, I'm just going to do it so I don't forget, I'm going to get rid of this entangled token. I will not be entangled next hero turn. Right now, there's eight damage coming to this Lost Swordsman. However, he gets to roll three dice for defense. Now, I didn't show you these dice. These are the Chaos dice. They came in uh, the Adventures game itself. They're used to activate all minions and bosses, etc. We're going to roll three of these, and whenever you do a defensive roll, you only roll your dice once, unless you have an ability that states otherwise. And then he's going to deal damage for every one of those uh, slash symbols, and a damage for every one of those red die symbols, this one. And then he'll actually prevent damage on one of these. So let's see what he gets. We'll give his three dice a roll. Okay, so he prevented one damage, so he's going to take seven. So he'll go from 11 down to four. Let's hope we can take him out next time. However, he is going to deal two non-defendable damage to us. Now, if we had our smoke bomb, we can maybe try and avoid that. But, whoops, that's the wrong token. We do not have that. So instead, we're just going to take two damage. Can't roll for defense. We're down to 33. Now it's his turn. So he's going to take all five of his dice and he gets to do an offensive roll just like what we did. He's going to take his dice and roll them up to three times trying to get as many of those symbols as he can. And he gets three of them right off the get-go on the first roll. 
Let's go ahead and roll these ones for the second one. Oh, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> he has all of them. He's dealing us seven defendable damage. Since it's defendable, we're going to go ahead and use our shade shift. What we can do is roll three of our dice. If we roll one of the sword symbols, we can do one damage. Now, even if I roll three sword symbols, the max amount of damage that I can deal there is one. Same with the shuriken, the max amount I can deal is two. So if I can get one of each of those symbols, I can deal him three out of the four of his damage. I almost could just kill him. I could also, if I get two of the mass symbols, gain a smoke bomb, which would be awesome. And I can reroll one of these dice. Come on, ninja, I want two masks. I want... Nope, that's definitely not two masks. <laughs> okay, well, I can deal him one damage with one of those. I can re-roll this. Oh, beautiful. So I'm going to deal him three non-defendable damage. One because of this one, two because of that one. So that's going to put him from four uh, all the way down to one health. <laughs> Poor guy. He only has one health. So... What this does mean, though, is now it's back to our turn. Now, if we were playing cooperatively, the next player would go, and they could come and potentially take him out for us. Uh, since we're only playing solo, all we're going to do is move right into that upkeep phase and then move to our income phase. We're going to gain one CP, and we get to draw one card from our deck. Oh, we have the Shade Walk. Okay, and this actually has two different abilities, so I'm going to put that into my hand. And what the heck, we're going to take our Shade Walk that we just got, Go down to zero CP, use both to pop it here. Now if we roll four out of our five mass symbols, we can gain a smoke bomb, inflict two delayed poison tokens, which by the way will deal six damage, and then deal five undefendable damage as well. We also have the jugulate, which is three mass, gain three ninjutsus, inflict delayed poison on a chosen opponent. Oh, and you know what, you guys? I forgot to take my seven damage. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm down to 26 health. Yeah, should have done that. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm still at 33 health. All right, we're going to grab our five dice. Let's give them a roll. Okay, that's actually not bad. We have right now what we call a small straight. One, followed by a two, then a three, then a four. So let's look at that quick and see if we just want to activate that. Our small straight is a poison blade. Inflict delayed poison and then deal five damage. It's great, except for that we'd love to kill him without him being able to do his defense roll. We're pretty close to our death blossom. We have the three swords and one shuriken. We just need one more. We then roll five dice. We deal one damage per sword, two damage per sh uh, shuriken. But if we also can roll one of these masks, the attack becomes undefendable. Eh, that's kind of risky too. However, the nice thing about the large straight is it would help us long term. We could get some ninjutsus. So I think I'm just going to try and roll a five here. Let's see. Nope, I rolled a one. And let's try and re-roll it one more time. And we rolled a five. Oh, that's awesome. So we now have a large straight. One, two, three, four, five. That will allow us to activate our shadow fane. We're going to gain two ninjutsus. Our stacking limit is three. Remember, we can use these as attack modifiers. I don't need to modify this attack. He has one health, and we're attacking him for eight damage. But he is going to be able to defend because it is defendable damage. Here's for hoping for a lot of sun symbols for defense. Uh, well, he gets one. The other two, he's going to deal us two damage. So we're going to go down to 24 health. But we did just defeat this guy. We dealt him a total of eight damage. So let's go ahead and roll our loot die. We rolled a nine. So then we look at the table. That was a nine, not an 11. We look at the green table. Let's see what we found. And a nine, that's actually not terrible. If you look here, here's our green table. Nine, we're going to gain one of those health back. So we're down to 24. We're going to go back up to 25. We've now completed this specific tile. It is now an explored tile. Let's go ahead and move to our next unexplored tile. And what we have is the Everglade Stream. So immediately, we're going to gain one green loot. Then we're going to spawn a green enemy, and that enemy gains first strike, which means it'll attack first. Oh, bummer. But let's go ahead and roll first to see what loot we'll get. We'll roll up our loot die, and we got an 18. With a roll of an 18, we're going to gain our first loot card. This is a common loot card, and it's unidentified. What that means is I'm going to grab it, keep it face down, and store it. And later at the shop, I could try and identify it if I'd like, or I could just sell it. We're going to grab one green common item. 
Since these loot cards have the same backings as your regular cards, what they recommend you do with these is you slide them underneath your board and have them match where their specific type of rarity is. So this common item is over here. We've got common, rare, um, epic, and legendary. So you'll slide the commons underneath here, the rare here, the epic ones here, and the legendary ones underneath there. Now let's go ahead and find out what minion we're going to take on. So we have found the Lizard Mage, and the Lizard Mage has first strike. Normally he doesn't, but because of the tile that we're on, he does. We can see here he only has 10 health, which is actually nice. He has 2 CP, but I don't think I'm going to worry about the CP. He gives us the ability, uh, the loot of a green die roll. He's looking for 2 stars and a red. If that happens, he uses this ability. His defense rolls 3. Let's go ahead and activate him, because he's first. We'll roll up his 5 chaos dice, and he already got what he needed. <laughs> he was looking for these 3. He has it. So, now it states roll 1 die, so we're going to roll 1. On the sun symbol here, it says inflict blind. What does blind do? The next time a player afflicted with this token concludes their offensive roll phase, they must remove it and roll one die. On a one through a two, their offensive roll fails and has no effect of any kind. Oh, so we could just totally miss him. Then he's going to deal us six plus the amount of chaos tokens that he has, but he doesn't have any chaos tokens. So he's just going to deal us six damage, and that is defendable. I have no way of stopping that 6 damage, so I don't forget like I did last time. I'm just going to take it. I'm down to 19 health. <laughs> now I get to roll 3 dice for defense, and let's see what we get. Ooh, uh, this will do... That's a total of 3 damage. Do I want to try and re... I could try and reroll and get a 6. No, I'm just going to deal the 3. I kind of want to deal the 3, because that'll put him down from 10 health down to only 7, which means it'll be easier for me to potentially just kill him next turn hopefully. However, I need to not forget that I am blinded, and there's a potential that after I do my offensive roll, that I will uh, totally miss. Now that that lizard mage has activated, let's go ahead and start with our turn. We'll go to 1 CP, and let's go ahead and draw a card, and we have getting paid. Gain 2 CP, it costs 0. Boom, using it right now. We're going to go from 1 CP, whoops, up to three and i should mention the max amount of cp you can have is a total of 15. uh yeah so far i'm not even close to that so i'm not worried i think i'm going to take the chance and not deal with this blindness i'm just going to leave it and hope i don't roll a one or a two i do have a way to remove a status effect but i don't really want to use it for that because there are worse status effects that are persistent this only happens for one turn so let's see how this works let's go ahead and just give our dice a roll okay oh this looks pretty good what do we have one two four four and six i like this kuji curry down here so because uh, it can deal undefendable damage so i'm thinking of keeping those three and re-rolling these two let's see oh my gosh that's awesome and then i just need this to be a four or a five let's see oh it's a three well guess what <laughs> this might actually work we're going to use our tippet here increase or decrease any die by the value of one it's going to cost us one cp to do this so we'll go down to two but by playing that card we're going to increase this to a four that means we have three shurikens and two masks. If we look here, our Kuji Curry says deal four pure damage to two chosen opponents, may choose the same opponent twice. Well, that Lizard Mage had seven health. That just dealt eight pure damage. Can't defend against that. Done. Oh, wait, we have to make sure that that blindness doesn't stop us. Let's roll. We rolled a five. Beautiful. Okay, so we'll discard the blindness token. If we had rolled a one or a two, that had totally missed. That was very risky, but I took it. <laughs> So now what we're going to do is roll on the loot. So let's roll this die up. We rolled a three. That's probably going to be great. It's actually not as bad as I was thinking. We're going to get a plus two power token. The max we can have of those are two, and we can use them to increase the damage of whatever effect that we're doing. So if I use that, I give ourselves plus two damage. So actually, that's not bad. I just need to make sure I use it uh, relatively quickly if I gain more because I can only have two of them. We've now defeated both the Lizard Mage and the Long Swordsman. Let's go ahead and check out what's here. Okay, first thing we're going to gain is a gold. So we're going to go up from 16 to 17 gold. We're going to fight a green monster. And yes, yeah, see, this is the reason why I wanted to get rid of the status token a different way. This is a parasite. Parasites stink. 
During their upkeep phase, if a player inflicted with this token has a positive status effect, which I do, I've got those power tokens, I've got those ninjutsu tokens, uh, they receive one non-defendable damage. Additionally, if they spend a positive status effect to successfully prevent or avoid damage, they have to remove the parasite and receive three non-defendable damage as an isolated source of undefendable damage. <laughs> yeah, we want to get rid of that parasite ASAP. Let's see what we find here. We have a boulder. Okay, this is uh, <laughs> it's kind of cute. 15 health though, two CP. I'm not gonna worry about the CP again. 15 health though, ow. This is definitely gonna take us some time to take him down unless we get lucky. Uh, he's trying to get four of the star symbols. Once again, green loot. On a failed offensive roll, he'll deal one undefendable damage regardless. If he gets this, he'll roll two uh, dice and deal a damage equal to the total roll value. Oh, he could deal up to 12 damage with that. Holy moly. And we've got, uh, he rolls five defense dice. He prevents one damage per, you see that X? That means it's per the amount of those symbols versus my defense was I get to deal damage on a single type of a character symbol. So that's how those are different. All right, 15 health. We get to go first because he does not have the first strike. Let's see what we're gonna do. We of course have to start off by taking one point of damage because of that parasite. We're in that upkeep phase and unfortunately we do have positive status effects. Yeah, not much we can do there. So let's go ahead and draw our top card and we have triple up. Uh, it costs us two CP to draw three cards. Okay, and we gain one more CP. The first thing we're going to do during our main phase is spend one of our CP. So we'll go down to only two CP to play. Get that out of here. Remove a status effect token on a chosen player. We're going to remove that parasite. Let's then go ahead and roll our dice for our roll phase. Let's see what we get. Oh, look at all those shurikens and one mask. With that roll, we can activate walk the line. Oh, that's kind of tempting. Or I could do pure damage if I could change one of these to a mask. I'd have two more rolls. Do I want to do that? That's going to be the question. Oh, uh, okay. If I only have three of those, that's not great. Oh, what the heck? Let's go ahead and just leave it. So we're going to do a walk the line. We're not going to roll anymore. This states we'll roll two dice and deal damage equal to the total roll value. If the final roll value is six or less, uh, this attack becomes undefendable. Let's go ahead and grab two of these dice and give them a roll. And we have 10 damage. Okay, he has a total of 15 health. Let's do it. We're going to use this to make it 12. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to spend one of these ninjutsus and we're going to add we'll roll a die and let's see that's a four on a four five or six we're adding two more damage and what i'm going to do so i don't forget that is i'm going to change this out to a plus four so we're dealing 10 plus four is 14. do i want to use the other one you know yeah let's use the other one we're going to remove the other one let's roll another die in that's only a two that's adding just one more damage. So we'll flip this over to the five side. Oh, there isn't a five. We'll do uh, four plus one. So that's meaning we're doing 10, 14, 15 total damage, but he does get to roll to defend. Ooh. You know what I can always do, you guys, if we don't defeat him, I have the fan of knives here that could potentially deal three non-defendable damage. So right now I'm dealing 15. He only has 15 health, but he is going to be able to defend. Let's see what he defends with. He rolls all five dice looking for sun symbols, and he got three of them. That means we only dealt him 12 damage, so he will uh, go down to three health. And that's because, if you look here, he gets one shield per sun symbol. So because of that, I do think it's time for us in our second main phase to play the Fan of Knives. This is going to use up all of our CP, so we're going to go from two down to zero, but... This states deal one undefendable damage to three chosen opponents, may choose the same opponent multiple times. Awesome, that's three. That's the three damage actually that we would need to take him out. He is toast. It does though mean we have no combat points, which is a bummer, but this means I don't take any damage, which is really helpful. Let's take all of these out. We'll roll this up. We got a 16 on the green loot table. 16 on the green loot table means we'll gain two more gold so we'll go up to 19 total gold and that will end our turn let's go ahead and check out our first level two enemy 
From here, we have two options of where we can go. We can go to this level two tile or this one. This one will get us a free roll on the level two loot, which is kind of cool. But remember, we need these portal tokens and they make ourselves better. So I'm definitely going to start here. Let's go ahead and flip this. Oh, and it is the Pillars of Salt. Okay, we're going to spawn a blue enemy. Then alternatively, we can roll one die on a one through three spawn. Oh my gosh, a level three on a four through six. We just gain three gold. And by my tile, I mean the portal tile. This is the number two one. So let's put it in the number two spot because that looks cool. <laughs> there we go. So we are one third of the way where we can actually access that tile. Well, what the heck? Let's go ahead and roll the die and see what we get. We get a six. Beautiful. That means we just gained three gold. So we're not going to have any uh, encounter in this location and we can keep moving on. We'll go from 19 up to 22 gold. Beautiful. We'll skip our hero turn. We won't draw cards. We won't gain CP. We'll just continue on. Let's go ahead and check out this one because I want another healing salve. That's my third one now. And this is a level one enemy. Okay, we have the Desert of Salt. Oh, it's the same thing. Spawn one. Alternatively, we can roll on a four to six gain two. Oh, we just did this. Let's try it again. Why not? Come on, four through a six. Let's see what we get. Oh, it's a three. Bummer. Okay, so that means we are going to have to fight a level two enemy. This is our first level two enemy. Let's see what they look like. We have the Dreg Beast. Okay, he has 15 health and one CP. I don't see anything that CP matters, so I'll ignore it. You can see here we're going to get a level two loot uh, roll, which is nice. Oh my gosh, deal six undefendable damage. That's just what he does. On a failed offensive roll, heroes lose one gold. He rolls four dice for defense, looking for suns, or I, he just he wants our money. <laughs> Okay, bring it on. 15 health. I'll put that on our tracker. We do get to go first because he does not have first strike and nothing on the uh, uh, tile tells us that he would go first. So let's hit him hard. First things first, though, we will go ahead and gain one beautiful CP. I wish it was more than that. <laughs> and draw one card. Try, try again. You or a chosen teammate may re-roll re up, up to two dice. Oh, nice. Let's go ahead and give our dice a roll and see what we get. Oh, wow. We have four of the shurikens and one mask. I've had that before. If I could get a second mask, I would be looking at eight damage. But if I get rid of this one, I only have three shurikens. That's pretty much nothing. I would need to roll a six with one die. I don't know. I don't know. I believe in myself. Six. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's all you got to do is believe in yourself, apparently. Look at that. I just did the Kuji Curry. With three shurikens and two masks, I'm going to deal four pure damage to two chosen opponents. You can choose the same opponent twice. Eight damage, and the guy only has 15 health. He's going to go down to seven health. <laughs> that is amazing. MPS, just so you guys know, when you guys are moving these, it's really, the one thing that's annoying is if you press on any of the sides at all, it's really hard to turn these. So I think you got to hold them from the circle, maybe? I don't know. Uh, just something that I've noted while I've been using these trackers. But yeah, he's down to 7 health. The only bad thing is this did not give us any way to defend. So we have 18 health that he could potentially cut down by 6. Let's see what he does. At least he wants something very specific. So let's see if that happens. He's got two of these. He's got two of these. <laughs> Okay, all he needs is that red symbol. So that was his first roll. Here's his second roll. He didn't get that. Okay, come on. Third roll. Don't be it. Don't be it. Beautiful. So that's a failed roll. He will not deal the six damage. On a failed roll, he'll steal one of my gold. So I'll go from 22 down to 21. Going back to our turn, we'll bump ourselves up to 2 CP. We'll draw our next card, better D. A chosen player may perform an additional roll attempt up to 5 dice during their defensive roll phase. That's nice. I don't think I'm going to play any cards during our main phase, so let's go ahead and just give our dice a roll and let's see what we get. Oh, we've got 4 swords and 1 shuriken. Now I could do something with 3 swords and 2 shuriken, so maybe I'll keep these. And, oh, but I could potentially do the straight. Hmm. I would inflict a poison and deal five damage. Two, three, a four. And if I could have either one of these, yeah, five or a one. Let's go ahead and reroll both of these. Okay, that's a two and a six. What does that give us? I kind of like our smoke screen, which is one sword, two shurikens, and a face. So, or a mask. So why don't I reroll both of these looking for a shuriken? Oh, I didn't get one. Instead, I have three swords. You know what? I think it's a good time to play it. Try, try again. So it's going to cost us one CP to do this. So we're going to go from two down to one. But then that means we can reroll up to two dice. 
So I like the idea of keeping these three and that. I just need this to be a shuriken. Ooh, is that? Well, we're gonna do it. And we got a shuriken, you can't see it. There it is, that's a shuriken. <laughs> okay, that's our death blossom. That's the first time we've activated that. Our death blossom needed three swords and two shurikens, which is exactly what we got. We're, we now will roll five dice, deal one damage per the swords, two damage per the shuriken, and on the uh, mask symbol, this attack becomes undefendable. So let's go ahead and pick up our dice. Come on. I want to see lots of shurikens and one mask. That would be the best. Okay, these two masks make everything undefendable, but we only dealt two, three, four damage, four undefendable damage. We'll move this down, one, two, three, four. He's down to three health, which is good, but we still didn't take him out, and we didn't get any benefits. I don't have any ninjutsus. Eh, it's, I'm still happy with it. Now to our drag beast's turn. Let's go ahead and roll our dice. We have two of these that he'll keep, one of these that he'll keep, and he will reroll both of these for his second roll. Oh, he got exactly it. Look at that. Exactly it. One, two, one, two, one. He's just going to deal us six non-defendable damage. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're down to 12. We can't do anything. Man, bummer. We'll go back to our turn. We'll go up to two CP. We'll draw a card and we have gain a ninjutsu. That's zero CP. Yeah, we're, we're going to use that right away. And we're going to gain one ninjutsu. Thank you. We'll then grab our dice and give it a roll for our roll phase. One, two, three, four. So we only need to do three damage. Four is dealing six, but I really want something that potentially can help us long term. Let's go ahead and just keep the mask this time and re-roll all of these. Let's see what we can get. Oh, we have three uh, shurikens, one sword, and a mask. And you know what? We could do the smoke screen with this, which we would have to deal with another attack, but hmm, is that worth it? We'd gain a smoke screen and a three ninjutsus, and then we'd poison him, so at the end of his turn, he would actually kill himself. Oh, but I could just kill him now. We're gonna do the smoke screen. It means we're going to have to deal with another attack. Hopefully I won't have to use my smoke bomb and I can bring it into the next battle. It says here, a chosen player gains a smoke bomb and three ninjutsus. Now I already have one ninjutsu. Now if I was doing an attack, I could spend that one ninjutsu and then gain three more. But I'm not dealing any damage right now. So all I get to do is gain this and gain two more of the ninjutsus for the future, which is part of the reason why I like this. The big thing is too, a chosen opponent is inflicted with the delayed poison. At the end of that player's turn, which is going to be the Dreg Beast, he's going to die because he will take three points of damage from this delayed poison, which is why I like it. And we do have this. If he tries to deal us six points of damage, we can potentially dodge it. Let's now move to the Dreg Beast's turn. We'll roll up our dice and we have two of these plus that plus this. Oh boy, you know he's going to activate. No, actually, come on. Don't be the slashing symbol. Oh, it is. One, two one two one so now it's the it's the decision of do i take six damage from him or do i try and smoke bomb it i feel like six damage isn't actually as terrible as it sounds <laughs> six okay that does put me at six health but i feel like the smoke bomb could be really helpful with a first strike of another enemy because now we know he's gonna die we at the end of his turn he takes three damage he only had three health left so now let's go ahead and roll for our loot and this is on the blue the blue loot one and we have a three great well it isn't long lasting but i'll still take it it's a plus two power token i'll go ahead and grab that now let's go ahead and move one space onto this spot that's going to gain us our second portal token which is our number three we need one more before we can take on the boss. And what's really nice is now I'll heal for five instead of only four with the self, which is the reason I did that. All right, we have the Void Crater. We're going to spawn a green monster. Remove all status effects from yourself. Are you serious? I have a plus two. I have three ninjutsus. I have a smoke bomb. I'm going to lose all of those. <laughs> You may pay two CP, I have that, to place one card from your discard pile into your hand. No, that doesn't seem worth it. Uh, so I'm just going to lose all of those benefits that I, I mean, I literally just took six damage to keep that smoke bomb, and now I'm going to lose it. Oh, that's jerky of that tile. Well, let's see what enemy is sitting in the void crater for us. We have a goblin enchanter, 10 health, 
Uh, once again, the green loot, you can see what it's trying to get. Deal four undefendable damage. Your opponent discards one card randomly. Defense only three would deal damage. Oh, man. Or inflict poison. Ugh. Okay. We get to attack first, though. Can we deal 10 damage? I don't know. Let's see. First things first, let's draw our card. And we have Poison Dart. Inflict delayed poison on a chosen opponent. Whoa, that is cool. And we're going to go up to 3 total CP. And that gives us a little leeway. I think I am going to finally put this Poison Blade 2 down. I'll go down to 2 CP. And this is going to upgrade our small straight. Now we'll roll one die. If we get one of these things, it's going to inflict a delayed. If it's this or this, we'll inflict 2 delayed poison. And it will deal 5 damage. That's actually pretty awesome. Let's pull our dice together and give them a roll. And, ooh, one, two, three. I feel like that's something or close to something. No, the walk the line, we need more than just three of the shurikens. Oh, wait, that's the Kuji Curry. Yes, we want to activate that. That's eight straight pure damage. Can't defend against it. So, yeah, we're definitely going to do that. Eight damage. <laughs> it's going to go from 10 health down to two. I will totally take that. And what do you say we kill her off right after she activates? We'll use our remaining 2 CP, so we're now down to 0. But we're going to use this Poison Dart. We're going to inflict the delayed poison on her. So that way, she's got nothing on us. She'll take 3 damage. She only has 2 health. She'll die at the end of her activation. Our Goblin Enchanter knows she's about to die. Let's see what she does. Okay, she's going to keep these two. Let's go ahead and roll these. She needs 2 stars. And we get 1 star. Okay, come on. You don't want to roll a star. You don't want to roll a star. Oh, of course. Yep, we've got it. We've got this plus this plus those two. Four undefendable damage. So we're going to go down to two health. Yeah, I think we're going to be using one of those salves. What do you guys think? And we only have two cards in hand. We're going to have to discard one. And we're going to discard this one, which is our better D. Well, the D hasn't helped us anyways because it's all been non-defendable damage. <laughs> But the nice thing is, at the end of her turn, she'll take three damage and die. Take that. Let's roll for it. A four. A four is a plus two power token. Well, at least it's something. To start our next turn, the first thing we're going to do is use our salve token, one of them, to heal three plus the two because we have two portal tokens. You can see here, three plus one per portal token that has been retrieved. So that's a total of five. So we're now up to a total of seven health. Now I'm trying to decide if I'm just going to use another one. Uh, yeah, you know, no. Yeah, let's not. Let's not for now. <laughs> We're going to go here. We're going to get to roll on the uh, green chart, the loot chart. And depending upon what we find here, hopefully it's something that we can take out. We have this uh, stained pyre. Gain two money and spawn a blue enemy. Alternately, receive three automatic damage and explore an unexplored adjacent tile. Yeah, three damage. I'll, you know what? I'm going to do that. Uh, I, I, I'm going to take the three damage. One, two, three. I'm doing this just because I'm running. I'm running out, you guys. I don't have a lot of health. And that's going to allow us to reveal this one. Explore an unrevealed tile. So we'll explore this one. <gasps> Yay, we get one CP. One CP per hero. So we're going to go from zero up to one, which is nice. We're going to only spawn a green enemy. All heroes choose and discard half their cards. Round it up. Then draw three. Well, actually, this card would have let me draw three. It's the only card I have in my hand. I'm going to discard it and then draw three. So I basically got this effect without having to pay the two CP. So thank you, Tile. You know, from that last Tile, this Tile was much nicer. <laughs> We've grabbed our three new cards. Let's see. We've got Not This Time. <gasps> Prevents six incoming damage. Uh, the Siamese. Uh, that means we can basically match another die. And roll one die, gain half of that value as CP. Whoa! All awesome cards. And don't forget, we get to roll for our green loot. We get a five. Five is one CP. I'll totally take that. We'll go from one to two. This will be our last level one enemy, most likely, unless some of the other tiles randomly bring one in. And we have the Serpentine, nine health, two CP, looking for the Venom Kiss. Oh, ow, this one could deal poison. I, I have to look up what poison does, but pretty certain poison is going to give us, what, one damage each turn? Terrible. Uh, only nine health, though, and we'll get a roll on the green loot uh, if we defeat her. What's nice is she does not have first strike. Thank goodness. So we're going to go to three CP. We're then going to draw another card. Walk the line. 
Oh, that one looks awesome. We're going to move into the uh, the main phase, and we're going to spend 2 CP right off the bat. I love this card. This one now, we even get an ability with only 3 shuriken, roll one die, and deal pure damage equal to that roll. So if we need to just take someone out, pure damage it. So we're going to place this out and replace the walk the line that we have now. Uh, we do still have our plus 2. Let's go ahead and now look at our cards. Do we want to? Yeah, you know what? I want to do this. We're going to roll a die and gain half of the value as CP. I don't know why we wouldn't do that. So let's go ahead and roll a die. Oh, one. Seriously? Well, we gained one CP. <laughs> Yay. Okay, is there anything else we want to do? No, everything else is when we're rolling. So let's go ahead and roll up our five dice and see what we want to do. Okay, we've got two masks, two swords, and a shuriken. Well, what do you say? Let's have a little bit of fun. Let's move those two to the side. Let's pick these up and give them a roll. And, oh, we've got a third one. Oh, my gosh. So that's three. That would be gain three ninjutsus and inflict a delayed po poison on the serpentine, which isn't great. But what the heck? You only do this a couple times, right? We need one more six, at least, to deal with our or activate our shadow walk, too. Let's give him a roll. Oh, my gosh. There it is. <laughs> that is our ultimate. We have assassinate. Inflict the delayed poison on two chosen opponents, maybe the same one. Gain a smoke bomb. Beautiful. I will take that. And deal 10 damage. And it's non-defendable. Guess what? She only has 9 health. Boom. She's already done. We don't even have to worry about her. And I got a smoke bomb, which is awesome. We also gain a loot. Let's see what we find. We got a 14. 14 on gold is 1 away from 2, but we'll just gain 1 gold. We'll go back up to 22. Let's go ahead and move on to our last tile. We will move here, and that's going to gain us our final portal token. That means we could take on this person or this enemy next round, actually, if we wanted to. Uh, let's see what we have here first. Ooh, this looks interesting. First, we'll go ahead and gain two gold. So we'll go from 22 up to 24. Then we're going to spawn a blue enemy. But you have here you and a chosen teammate. So it's just going to be me discards one positive status effect token and gains blind remember what blind does we get potentially a miss so i'm going to gain this and i have to discard one of my tokens well you know which one i'm going to discard i'm going to discard my plus two that i have because i do not want to lose that smoke bomb have i even used a smoke bomb yet i don't think i even have but we're going to discard this so we don't have it but we still have our smoke bomb thank goodness we'll draw our top enemy here and we have the Entropy Mage, 13 health, 2 CP. It's looking for two of the suns and the red die. It gains chaos tokens, then deals seven plus one. Ooh, and then, okay, gross, gross, gross. Uh, at least no first strike. I am going to, at the beginning of our enemy activation, use our second self. That is now gonna heal us for six. So that's gonna put us all the way up to 10 total health. And the question is, do we want to use the other one? No. Well, let's see if we can survive. We are blinded, and I have no way of getting rid of that, at least for now. Let's gain our third CP. So now we're at three. And let's go ahead and draw the top card of our deck. And we have... Uh, so wild. Change the value of one of your dice. Oh, that's awesome. But it does cost two CP. All of our cards are about dice rolling. So let's go ahead and roll up our dice first. Oh, we've got three swords and two shuriken. I think that actually activates something. Yeah, that activates our death blossom. I could also try and go for a straight. Well, I only have, yeah, I have three, four, five. So let's go ahead and keep that and re-roll these two and let's see what we get. Oh, we've got four shurikens. Oh, we can also just deal four shurikens for walk the line. Yeah, you know what? That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do four shurikens for walk the line. Now we need to roll for blindness. And we rolled a three, I believe a one or a two, the blindness would come into effect. Beautiful. Yep, a one or a two, you fail. On a three or higher, you don't. Beautiful. Take that blindness. Didn't do anything to us. We will go ahead and do walk the line. This states, we'll roll two dice and deal damage equal to the total roll value. You may re-roll one of these dice if you'd like. If the final roll value is six or less, it becomes undefendable so i'm hoping actually for six damage <laughs> if it's more than that he can defend and bad things can happen we'll grab our two dice give it a roll oh we have nine damage well nothing i can do about that i could re-roll on uh this could be a four five or a six this six is already doing enough 
Well, let's go ahead. I mean, I have more chance of getting better, right? I don't know. Do I? Well, I did. I got a 10. <laughs> I don't know if that was the right choice, but I did it. I t I'm dealing 10 damage. Let's have him defend. So you can see here for our Entropy Mage, we're guaranteed to deal that 10 damage. He only has 3 health remaining. But when you have this, he's looking for Suns to get Chaos Tokens, and then he's going to deal 1 damage per Chaos Token. Here's to no Suns, no Suns! Yes, that's no Suns! Awesome! Okay, so now it's going to go to his turn, and he's going to roll. Let's keep up the no Suns, shall we? First roll. Oh, I've got 1 Sun in this. Okay, he only needs one more sun, and he got it for the second roll. So now what we're going to do is roll one die, and it is the slash symbol. He'll gain two of these chaos tokens, and then what he will do is deal seven plus two, so that's a total of nine damage. But don't forget, he is only at three health, so we have to remember that. I can't remember the last time that I've tried to defend, but let's do it. Let's see if we can just kill him right here. I need three total damage. Beautiful. One plus this, that's one damage, that's two damage, that's three. He's going to die, but he is still dealing us a total of nine damage. However, I am going to play this card. It's going to cost me one CP, so I'll go back down to two CP, but I'm going to prevent six of those nine. So I'm only going to take three damage. One, two, three, so I'm down to seven health. <laughs> I want to keep that smoke bomb for the next place that we're going. <laughs> Let's go ahead now and roll for loot because we just dealt him three damage. That'll put him down to zero. That entropy mage killed himself while trying to attack me. Take that. Let's roll up our loot die, and we got an 18. Ooh, that's got to be a card. I was so hoping for a rare or an epic, but no, 18 on the level two is still a common one. So we're still just going to get a common item. And we'll just slot it underneath our other one so we have two common items we could potentially try and identify. I'm not entirely sure, but if I wasn't recording, I probably would go to this level 3. Just because there's a level 2 loot there. And a salve. Ooh, that's... No, it's not worth it. I'm going to have to use the salve to stay alive. Yeah. I'm just going to go to the final spot. Let's take out that level 4 enemy. So we are going to gain another salve, which is good. That'll put us back up to 2. And let's go ahead and reveal that tile. We have our boss portal. You can see here we're going to gain 2 CP. So we're going to go from 2 to 4 CP, which is pretty nice. And we're going to gain 3 gold. So that's going to put us from 24 up to 27 gold. Then we're going to spawn one of the level 4 enemies. It begins with one additional King's Hand token. So let's show you what a King's Hand token is. Normally they'll spawn with one, but this guy will have two. The King's Hand token can be activated in two ways. One, if none of their abilities are activated, or two, if they're targeted with your ultimate. If that happens, they'll roll a die, and depending upon what they roll, and on our specific card it states here that a successful roll is a value of 4 through 6. If they do, they make you re-roll one of your dice, or they get a new roll phase that's an offensive roll phase for them. So that's essentially how the King's Hand works. They have two of those tokens, so likely what it means is every round we're going to get hit, or I'm going to have to try and use my ultimate just to make them make them make me re-roll one of our dice for it. So yeah, could be pretty brutal. Let's see what our level four uh, minion is. Let's flip our card and see what we have. We have the Goblin Horde. They have a total of, yes, 25 health. <laughs> that's going to be fun. They're looking for a pretty simple objective, as you can see here. Look at that loot. That loot's awesome. Uh, they deal damage equal to half of their health. Wow. And that's rounded up. <laughs> that is going to be painful. So 26, that's going to be 13 damage for the first time they attack because... Yeah, we're going to have to deal them damage. Normally, they come out with one of the King's Hand token, but all of them have that, so of the level four. So this guy's going to have two. On a failed offensive roll, heal three damage and remove all positive status effects from the active player. And they have a unique defense. When they have that, that means that they can even defend against your ultimate. And it says here, all damage received as a result of an opponent's attack is reduced to a minimum of six. So they're not going to roll dice for defense. They're just going to take a maximum of six damage every time we damage them. Hmm. We could use that to our advantage, maybe. The biggest thing is we just have to survive them half of their damage if the damage is less than or equal to five this attack becomes undefendable by the way i don't know if i said that all right 26 health has a total of six cp but i don't see anything on here that affects cp so i'm not gonna worry about the cp 
let's see what we can do. Oh, first thing, we're going to gain another one of our combat points. So we'll go from four to five. And let's go ahead and draw another card. And we have escape. Play this role, prevent damage, prevent or gain a smoke bomb. Wow, that could be really, really, really helpful. Well, I should have done this before I drew my cards, but I got a little distracted. Sorry. I am going to spend one of these salves to go ahead and heal six damage. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's going to put me up at least to 13. I have one left. Okay. Now, everything that I have is for affecting dice rolls. So let's just start with our dice roll and see what we get. Whoa, four shurikens. Uh, yeah, I think walking the line, it's not a question. You guys know what that does. We're going to roll two dice. I just need six damage uh, because that's what he can take. He can't take any more than that anyhow. Five plus three is eight. The maximum amount he can take is six. So a one, two, three, four, five, six. He's down to 19 total health. All right, now it's time to activate him. His attack here will deal us 10 damage, by the way, if he gets it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and roll these up. Okay, I see two of them. Second roll. Let's see what he gets. Okay, here's two more. Yeah, he's very likely to get, going to get it. Here's his final one. There it is. He just activated it. He's dealing us 10 damage. We'll start by activating our defense. Let's roll three dice. Oh, uh, we don't need a smoke bomb. We already have one. We have what we need here to deal him a total of three damage. I believe we can do that. That's outside of his, that's during his turn. One, two, three. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this smoke bomb. So when we use this, we have to roll a one to a three and we can avoid all the damage that he's doing to us. Come on. Come on. One to a three. No, that's a five. So I think it's safe to say we can use our so wild here. Change the value of any one die. It's going to cost us two CP. We're going to go from five down to three. Let's change that to a one, shall we? <laughs> Since we changed that to a one, he deals us no damage. Oh, okay, that's his activation. That's all he's going to do. We're going to go back to us. First thing we're going to do is increase our CP up to four. Then let's go ahead and draw our card. And we have twice as wild. Cost us three CP to change the value of any two dice. Oh my gosh, that's actually amazing. All right, let's go ahead and grab our five dice. The max we can do, you guys, is six. So let's see. We have one, two, three, four. You know what? One, two, three, four. Four of those, we can just use our slash. If we look here, our slash deals six straight damage. I will definitely take that. Six is what he can take. So he'll go from 16 all the way down to 10. This is actually working pretty well for us. <laughs> He's now going to attack us back. Half his damage now is only five. We could totally soak a five damage attack. Bring it, goblin horde. Bring it. We'll roll these up. Okay, he's got three already that match. <laughs> you know it's going to happen. There's one. And let's see. He might not do it. No, he did. All right. He's going to deal us five damage. But don't forget, we get to defend. So let's go ahead and roll these up. Oh, we got two of these. That's going to give us a smoke bomb. Yeah, let's go ahead and gain a smoke bomb and then let's use it. Let's let's use it right now. And we need to roll a one to a three. Let's roll it. No, we rolled a four. Are you serious? I could spend something to re-roll that. No, I don't think I want to. Instead, I think I'm going to use escape. Uh, yeah, because this is dealing us the most damage probably that he's going to do to us. It costs us zero CP. Play only after being attacked. Roll one die. If we roll a sword, we'll get one defense. If we roll a shuriken, we'll get two defense. If we roll the mask, we'll gain a smoke bomb that we could use. So he's dealing us five damage right now. Let's see. Well, it'd be good if I could actually roll this here. Okay, there we go. Now he's dealing us four damage. So one, two, three, four. We're down to nine total health. Okay, we're still doing okay. Still doing okay. <laughs> Let's start the next round. We'll go back up to five CP. Let's draw this card. We have smoke offering. If you discard one card, a chosen player gains one smoke bomb. Oh, yeah. We're probably going to use that. What are we going to? Well, I don't know. I don't know what we'll discard. Let's grab our five dice and give them a roll. And we've got three shurikens. Okay, one, one, four, five, five. I think let's go ahead and try and go for all shurikens, or at least another one shuriken. Uh, we got a shuriken here and this one. Let's go ahead and roll this one up. All right, beautiful. Four shurikens, that's going to give us walk the line two, which as we know, we'll roll two dice and deal damage equal to whatever we have. 
If it's six or less, it's undefendable. doesn't matter. He doesn't roll to defend. And we can re-roll one of these dice. So we'll roll them up. Oh, that's only five damage. I really want to be able to do six. Let's re-roll this one. Oh, no. How about um four? <laughs> oh, that's okay. We dealt four damage to him. That's going to put him down to six. So he'll go from ten down to six. And now he is going to activate. I think we should be able to take him out here. Let's see. He'll start off by rolling. He's got three that he'll keep. Let's re-roll these two. And he gets one. Let's see. Is he going to have to use a king's hand? <laughs> he, <laughs> he always gets it. So his total health is six. Six divided by two is three damage. That's non-defendable. So we'll go down from nine. One, two, three. We're down to six health. It's six to six. Let's go ahead and then increase our uh, command points to six. And let's draw a car. We have Death Blossom. Costs us two CP to drop that on to our board. Here's the deal, though. I just need to deal six damage. That's all I need to do. Let's see what we can get. Oh, look at this. One, two, three, four. Four of those. I'm not even going to worry about this. Four of those are six. Oh, there you go. Five of those are seven damage. We just took out the Goblin Horde. That's our slash right here. One, two, three, four, five. Deal seven damage. He only has six health remaining. Uh, well, we can only do six damage at a time anyways. So, boom. He's done. Let's go ahead and roll for our loot, and we get a 16. 16 is an epic loot. Awesome. Okay, cool. That's going to end our portal crawl. So now we can look at our conclusion over here, and what we can do is shop and then record our win on our score sheet and then advance to the next scenario, which is going to be a boss. So how shopping works, you can see this three and a green. We're going to reveal three green common items and one rare common item we could potentially buy. We also have three pieces of loot, two that are considered common, and one that's epic that we just earned, and we could potentially discover them and put them into our deck. Here we have our shop that we get to go to before taking on our first boss, which is the Barbarian. So the first thing you'll want to do is you'll want to take your gold and you're going to round it up to the nearest five. So I'm at 27. I get to move that up to 30. This happens regardless of whether you win or lose. Awesome. So we have 30 gold that we can spend. Now, these three cards are the three that are going to be in the shop that I can potentially buy. We're going to reveal those. These are the cards that are unidentified, and we can spend 10 gold to identify them and then immediately put them into our deck. Uh, the cost to put these ones that we are going to look at are up here. So we can buy a common one for 10 bucks. We can also sell the two that we the two that we did find for five bucks. So let's go ahead and first look at these three that we found, or I should not say found that are in the shop. We have bye bye. This is a leveled up one. Remove a status effect token from a chosen player. That's a level two, uh, probably because it costs less CP. Gold digger. This one costs 1 CP, gain 3 gold. If played during a boss battle, gain 2 CP and draw 1 card instead. And then for our third one, we have the Trench Coat. When selling a card, gain 2 CP instead of 1 CP. So these three are the common cards that we could potentially purchase. Our one rare, we have the Golden Rule 2. A chosen hero may put an ability upgrade card from their hand into play for free. Yeah, that's 0 CP. I'm buying that. I'm buying that right now. We're going to go from 30 down to 15. Okay, it's cost us 15 gold to do that. That is awesome. Some of those cost 2 CP. So we get to play this. It costs 0 CP, and we can put one out for 0 CP. Putting that into our deck, our deck has a maximum size of 50. It is now at 34. We're good to go. It's not often that you get epic loot, at least not at the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and spend 10 gold so I can immediately identify this and put this one into my deck. This is Prosperity 3. Draw one card. A chosen hero gains 2 CP, and that's a free card. Doesn't cost any CP. Beautiful. I'm going to put that into my deck. No questions asked. Now, I do have two unidentified uh cards here what i could do i could take a chance there's one card that i like i like this bye bye because it costs only one cp to remove a status card but i could instead i have five gold left i could sell this one for five gold and then randomly reveal that one and keep it for 10 yeah let's do it uh, this one's okay but I'm looking for something else. So let's go ahead and get rid of that one. That's going to gain us five gold. So we're going to go from five up to 10. And then we're going to spend all 10 because we're then going to identify this card. Could be good, could be bad. Oh, it's empowered. Increase your attack damage by two for each ability you have upgraded to a maximum of six. 
Wow. Yeah, I like that one. It's a common one, but I'll go into my deck. The remaining ones of these, I'm going to put back into the specific decks of loot and shuffle them up. I have now just added these three cards into my deck for the rest of the campaign. So cool. Okay, now something I do want to mention. Uh, remember I talked about this bye bye card and we had this bye bye two card. If I had purchased the bye bye two card, you see that symbol? That symbol would have told me that I needed to remove this one. I can't have too many of these bye bye cards into my deck, so I'd actually remove this one and replace it with this one. These cards are new cards so they don't replace anything i've just added three cards to my 33 card deck so now my deck is 36 cards i've now completed my campaign scoring sheet for our first scenario i have one remaining self no gold uh, i don't have any unclaimed boss loot i did not explore all the tiles i had two tiles i did not explore our scenario score is 20 because we're playing on normal so my total scenario or session score is 21 now up here, I'm going to say this is our scenario number two. We have starting selves. We take the self that we had, which is one from our prior scenario that we left with, and we'll start with one for this next one. If ever you lose, you're going to take whatever number that you have remaining of selves and add three to it. So uh, yeah, you can see here, if you lost starting selves of previous session plus three. So if I had lost this scenario, I would have actually started this one with five instead of one <laughs> uh, and you have to redo the same scenario that's why there's up to 20 sessions on here but it's only an eight campaign uh eight scenario campaign all right so with that let's move to the boss fight i think i'm going to do that in another video so i hope you guys enjoyed this thanks so much for watching i'll catch you at the next stop